Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to be speaking about OAD, which is the Organization for Women of African and Asian Descent. And as is the case for all of my videos and research projects, I know that my research is not at all exhaustive. I know that a lot of stories and sources have been removed, silenced, erased, and lost in the archives. This is simply a compilation of information that I could find. So if there is anything that you think I've missed, or if you have any stories that you'd like to add, feel free to put them in the description box below or DM them to me and I will share it on this platform. As I said, OAD was the Organisation for Women of African and Asian Descent. It was a feminist left-wing organisation for black and Asian women in the UK, though they largely operated in and around London. It was set up in February of 1978 in Coventry, and it was in the winter of that same year that it became the Organisation for Women of African and Asian Descent. That was when Afro-Asian unity had been established. Its founding members include Stella Dadzi, Gail Lewis and Olive Morris, and they were also members of the UK's African Students' Union. OAD's 1978 constitution states that, throughout history, black women have made an equal and significant contribution to the development of our people the richness of our various cultures, to our resistance against colonial oppression, and to our struggles for national liberation. Black women have been, and we continue to be, strong, resilient and courageous, despite the fact that we are the most oppressed group in any society we live in. Our race, our sex and low economic status have placed us at the bottom of the heap in Britain and throughout the world. It was in order to fight against this triple oppression as we experience it in Britain, that OAD was formed. OAD was created in response to the largely male-dominated organisations in the UK like that of the African Students' Union. It was formed of black and Asian women, some of whom were born in the UK or in London, some of whom were first-generation immigrants, so they had recently migrated, and some who were studying. They were loosely related to the Brixton Black Women's Group, which Olive Morris was actually part of. I'll probably do a video on them sometime in the future, just because I think the work they did was amazing. Um, but yeah, it was through their participation in and attendance to events held by the Brixton Black Women's Group that the members of OAD had formed networks, formed relationships, and decided to create OAD. According to The Heart of the Race, there was a need for Black and Asian women to make contact with one another on a national basis. OAD operated by committees and functioned as an umbrella organisation throughout the women's liberation movement, being an independent and autonomous national organisation of black women. It was a culmination of the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Force Women's League and the Ethiopian Women's Study Group, as well as a plethora of other grassroots organisations, created and facilitated by and centred around black and Asian women. OAD campaigned on a range of issues, including immigration and deportation, police and defence laws such as the SUS law, exclusion of black and Asian students from school, as well as domestic violence, and they really advocated for reproductive and health rights in the UK. They also supported industrial action by black and Asian women. I think OAD is most known for their campaign against the Depo-Provera contraceptive drug, which was disproportionately used on black women in the UK. They're also quite well known for a sit-in that they held at Heathrow Airport, which campaigned against the use of virginity tests on Asian immigrants, which was used to test their marriage and residency claims in the UK. And this process, this sit-in that they held at Heathrow Airport, actually resulted in a demonstration in central London against state violence. It was organised by women from and in the Asian women's movement as well as the Brixton Black Women's Group. Another campaign of theirs which I really like is the FOAD newspaper. It provided people with a space for them to share their thoughts about the topics that I mentioned earlier. It also provided people with political education and enabled them to get involved in a range of ways. I think FOAD was amazing and I'm so happy that there's that legacy. According to OAD, FOAD was created to ensure that women from OAD knew what other women were doing and could be called upon to give practical support. In 1979, OAD held their first conference, the Black Women's Conference, 
and at this time it was quite popular for black and Asian to be conflated into political blackness and um, hence the black women's conference. The 1979 conference was actually considered to be the inception of the black women's movement in the UK and this was as a result of the many anti-racist and anti-sexist organisations that were kind of born from the conference that emerged in the years following, like that of the Subtle Black Sisters in Northwest London. OAS held another conference in 1980 and in 1981, and from my research, it seemed like the 1981 conference was especially seminal to the future of OAS, and this is because 1981 was a year largely marked by racial tensions and race riots that followed that. At the 1981 conference, there was actually a bit of friction regarding the politics of the group and the direction the group wanted to go in, though no concrete solutions were presented and consequently no concrete solutions were put into place. Some of the indigenous African women wanted there to be a focus on political events that were going on in Africa, though some of the women in the UK wanted there to be a focus on political and racial struggle in the UK. In an article published in Feminist Review, the author asks, how could we all come under one banner? How could our primary fights against racism and sexism be reconciled with our African sisters' fights? The author then goes on to say, in our attempt to develop a political analysis and practice which recognise the anti-imperialist base of all our struggles, we had failed to take account of the subjective impact of specific situations and their practical implications. Thus, the fact that our aims and objectives were alts embracing might have avoided rather than confronted the problem. Other tensions arose when some Asian women felt excluded and when cultural differences between African and Black British women in OAD weren't being adequately addressed. There were also some contentions regarding Black women's sexuality in OAD, um, whereby the struggle for a new and self-identified sexuality was therefore part of the anti-imperialist struggle since such self-definition centred around the nexus of relations of production and relations of gender involved a challenge to both our traditional cultures and cultural imperialism. Though OAD saw its end in 1982, the impact it had and continues to have on black political education, black feminism and feminism just in general, as well as anti-racist and anti-sexist organising in the UK is truly amazing. In The Heart of the Race, it states that OAD's lifetime spanned only five years, from its foundation in 1978 to its demise in 1983. During this time, it captured the imagination of many black women and succeeded in bringing a new women's dimension to the black struggles of the 80s. I personally am eternally thankful and grateful for the work that OAD did in the 70s and 80s. It made a difference to the black and Asian women involved in and also at the receiving end of its campaigns, if not materially, then politically and socially and like emotionally as well, because in organising there is an element of care that you don't get anywhere else. There has been so much erasure regarding black women's political action and political education and I think knowing so much about OAD really does much to fill in the archival voids that exist, albeit we don't know everything about them, but I think we know enough that our um, knowledge of political education and political action and the feminist movement in the UK can be somewhat coherent, is somewhat coherent. I think I heard about the Combehe River Collective before I heard about OAD and now knowing so much about them it's definitely nice to know that there was a sister organisation or there was a similar organisation to the Combehe River Collective that I am much more proximate to as a person living in the UK um, which is always nice to know you know but yeah this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something if you knew nothing and if you knew a little bit i hope you know a little bit more and i will see you in my next video bye